Tintach Gwil Mij Egan Stad Shaw Gwil on Tashpontus in Arja, Hyva in Arja, Agus Riverwide Gaveki, Pubble Naharan, Napectri Ailia Shaw. It's 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 a great moment because this exhibition is a long time in its inception and now we we are here hanging the exhibition and uh, I think people are going to respond very, very well to these striking images and the amazing text. Yes, indeed, the amazing text. <laughs> How do you feel, Dara, that it's halfway up now? How amazing well, is the text? <laughs> I am not taking responsibility, it's up to you to you. The responsibility <laughs> lies on your shoulders, right? <laughs> For Andrade, for in, in, inviting us here in, in, for the exhibition, and for Galen and Raven for providing the text, you know. So I take no responsibility. I paint anyway. So, you know, happy painting. So you made me happy. If, if nothing else, I don't care about anybody else. If they enjoy the paintings well enough, and they enjoy the, the text, because I thought I knew the tone book really you off by heart, and then your your text, you seem to have dug out other things there that, especially thinking about the do work, which I loved. The, the otter and, and drinking the two Holland's blood and eat drinking. Or is that the way? And then at the end, uh, I always thought that it was the the raven came, the fake do came and perched on the shoulder and drank the blood. Yeah. But you were saying the otter came as well. Yeah. Well, look at the whole uh, stories are saturated in blood and bloodletting, and the, the 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 drinking of blood is only a small part of it, but it's definitely there. The, the the whole uh, events of Cúhollán's life are, for me, set in nature and set to a background of these uh, god-like creatures and half-humans and half-animals. Uh, uh, and there's, there's so much uh, of, of our Irish countryside and nature. So we, we definitely know where all this took place. Uh, Arma, and, uh, 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 of course, and, 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 and into the wee county as well. Yeah, and yeah. a bit, a bit of uh, Meath. Uh, 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 but there's a special connection with Arma, no doubt about it. And the other thing I like to uh, connect with, with Andrighead as well, the important, uh, the, the Andrighead over in Scotland, uh -huh. there, was, there was this bridge. It's, it's in your text there again. And the bridge was like a, a, a seesaw, and uh, Coo Holland had learned to. This is challenge the Coody uh, on the Isles of Isles Guy, wasn't it? That's right. And, and I've been to the fort and I've seen the place and, uh, where the fort's sitting, and you can see beyond the waves uh, Anthem in, in, in the distance. And uh, there was a special feat that he had to accomplish to get over this seesaw bridge, and then he, of course comes right at the end. Uh -huh. What must have been caught, caught after that bridge, was it? Why was it called well, Andrighead? Um, well, it's actually called Andrighead um, because of where it's situated on the Orm Road, right just on the bridge, the railway bridge, but also the thinking behind it is that we do a lot of cross-community work and we sort of bring Irish language out to, oh. to all places in Belfast. And so, which is why we're delighted to be in here in the Ulster Museum today. It's such a lovely space for it, and to have such a lot of Irish text up on the wall and accompanying your lovely paintings. So uh, we're delighted, and and it's a big celebration for us because it's part of our festival. So it's it's great that we're here. That it's halfway up and it's looking well. Hi. I think, well, I think it's been very interesting. Well, Dara did most of the painting. Well, he, he did the painting in Armagh and also in Donegal. But over the summer in Donegal, we had a lot of um, little small visitors <laughs> who would come in and look at the paintings and be very interested and be able to pick out little details in the paintings and say something about mm -hmm. what, what they thought was happening. So I think children will enjoy uh, interpreting the pictures and getting something from the pictures. and. Of course, the colours are very bright, so that'd be uh, that that'd be very very attractive to the younger people yeah. too. That's right. When the wee ones were watching the painting, well, I, I thought yeah. I was painting them as a sort of a ritualistic, religious paintings, mm. you know. And the wee fella was called uh, Oren, was it? Or Milo? 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 So my, it was keeping Milo's footprints off the paintings. But sometimes <laughs> I laid them out on the floor to have a wee look at them, and then you'd, you'd see these little footprints. 
But then he, he, he's eaten an awful lot of melon one day. Uh-huh. You know, when people say, okay. as a great, uh, what was he doing with the melon? He was putting a piece of melon, uh, about 50 canvases out on the floor, and on each of the canvases was a little ritual offering of melon. Oh. And we put ham, so he was sort of feeding the paintings. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that was oh, his good, contribution. Good, good. He's, he was about three, he's about three. Uh-huh. Do you know, if there's any character mythological as he is that represents the psyche of Ireland, it has to be Cú Hollen and the events in, in his life because uh, when you think of all the courage, uh, sometimes the, the standing up against uh, huge odds when it would be better to retreat uh, and also the, the, the sorrow uh, is there anything more uh, sorrowful than Emer uh, calling over the body, the decapitated body of her lover, and uh, asking uh, how this could happen to me, and how every woman in Ireland or in Scotland were jealous of me until this day? and she digs her nails into his skin and uh, she knows that soon she will be buried in the same grave and she kisses his bloodless lips. And, uh, it's just, uh, it's a real, of all the men to fall in love with, with, with her, to fall in love with the hero that is obviously going to go on uh, perilous journeys and, and and to have spears thrown at him on a daily basis and, and eventually, despite uh, protecting Ulster for so long, single-handedly being killed himself. Just what you're saying, I'm not to take a completely opposite point of view. Oliver Shepherd statue of um, Pooh Holland, the GPO, associates Pooh Holland with death. You know, I would see him because he had no respect for death. He said, as long as his name would live on, that's right. So he, he was like a, a spirit, and it was an animal spirit that was in him of the otter and the bull and the horse. But the, the, the death, he it, it, it was a, nearly like a, a deity. You know, you like to think that the, the likes of Henry Shefflin or D, uh, DJ Keen. Uh, uh, the, the spirit, you know, or even McGeeley, that, that, that spirit of Coo Holland. Uh, it is in the people, it's, it, it's on the football yes. field, the hurling fields, and athletics, you know, McElroy mm. winning the golf, you know, there's a, a kind of a, a hero thing, that well, the, the, the death, it, yeah. it, death, there was a victory over death, and Coo had that victory because he, his name lived on, and um, I was trying to, I, I, was, I was staying in the pains, I, I know he's, it's in the text that he does die and everything, and it's away from that image of death, and, and, the, and the painting behind you, the, the fact that at Halloween, we, that the dead do come back and are part of our lives, you know, the fire is built up for them, uh, the food is left on the table at Halloween, you know, that we welcome them back into our lives. And, 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 and the story itself uh, has lived um, miraculously. Oh yeah, cool. Holland is more alive oh, yeah. than mm. any like other. Like you were saying, uh, Mullaban, the football team's called there, like the Coo Hollands and Armagh. Right? There's a, a Taekwondo, uh, Jiu Jitsu uh, uh, club in the Bronx called Coo Holland. Uh, they're, they're, the, the one thing I would say though that uh, maybe Coo Holland, despite his, his, his big stories, you know, the slaying of the hound, the, lots of other stories about Coo Holland have remained in the text and haven't made the jump into the folklore mm-hmm. that, for example, Finn McCool have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully this exhibition, once the text will do that, and bring it to more people, make it more accessible. Because I think, you know, we all, every nation needs its heroes, and I think Coo and the stories around Coo Holland just ennoble the people who, who know them and who read about them. Um, I think that's an essential part of humanity.